Today we're going to talk about the last conditional statement we have inside JavaScript called a switch statement. Now a switch statement is very similar to the previous ones we talked about in the previous episode, which was the if, else if, and else statement. However, a switch statement is something we want to use if we have a lot of data that we want to check for. For example, if I wanted to check for you know, which day of the week it is today, then a if statement and an else if statement and, you know, all the ones we talked about in the previous episode, there might be too much code to write. So we can do this much more simple by writing a switch statement. Now, as you guys can see inside my code here, I have a very basic HTML5 setup. I have a paragraph called test and I have a variable called day. Now, of course, day is just a variable that I created. I haven't actually set it equal to something yet. And underneath here, I have a very basic document get element by ID called test. And I want to insert some kind of HTML code inside the paragraph tag down here. And right now it says it is plus day, which basically means that we're going to say it is. And then whatever the variable day is, it's going to go ahead and insert that into this sentence down here. So what I want to do is I want to create a switch statement that checks what day of the week it is right now, and then insert the day inside this text down here. If I were to actually go inside the browser, you guys can see that it says it is undefined because right now day is not equal to anything yet. So the way we create a switch statement is if I were to go down in between these two lines of code and say switch parentheses curly brackets, I can go ahead and set the condition inside the parentheses and whatever that is going to be equal to, I'm going to have different cases inside the curly brackets. So it's slightly different than an if statement. So right now, because I want to check what day of the week it is right now, I'm going to go ahead and go inside the parentheses. I'm going to create a new date object. We talked about in one of the previous episodes. We do actually need to write this in big, like so. And the date object, I want to get day parentheses, which means that right now inside this date object, I want to get the current day. Now this is going to return some kind of value. If we were to actually go ahead and spit this out inside the browser, you know, by just copy pasting it down here, just to test it, you guys can see that right now we get three. And that's because right now, at least right now where I'm sitting, it's Wednesday. So we were to count the days of the week, Monday is one, Tuesday is two, and Wednesday is three. So right now we're getting Wednesday. So what I want to do here, I'm just gonna go ahead and go back here. Uh, what I want to do here is I want to say, okay, so this, is going to return a certain data, you know, a certain piece of data, which is three. I want to go inside the switch and I want to check for certain cases that might happen inside whatever is inside the parentheses. So case one, by writing case, is going to be equal to one, which means that right now I'm actually checking if this statement down here is equal to one. If it is equal to one, I want to say colon. I'm going to go ahead and jump down to the next line. I want to set day equal to Monday, like so. I'm gonna go down to the next line and what we need to make sure we do here is we need to include something called a break. Now a break is something we have to do each time we end off one of these conditions or one of these cases we have inside the switch statement. So now that we have case one, we can actually go ahead and create case number two. So I'm gonna say case two, which means that if this data up here is equal to two, then it needs to run whatever's inside these uh, this case down here. So I'm gonna say colon, next line, and then I'm gonna go ahead and set day equal to Tuesday. If I can actually spell that, S-D-A-Y, end off the line of code, down and break. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill out one case for each day of the week. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy paste what we have here. I'm gonna paste it down and I'm gonna go ahead and change the case to three. I'm gonna change the text to Wednesday. Then I'm gonna go ahead and copy it down again. Change the case to four, Thursday, like so. Then we have case five, which is going to be equal to Friday. And then the last one, or at least the two last ones down here, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy them down really quick. It's going to be six and zero because Sunday is equal to zero when we want to get the day. So it's not equal to seven, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and change these days really quick. We're gonna say Saturday and Sunday because remember Sunday is zero when we do actually get 
the day of a new data object, okay? So right now, we have seven different cases here, but one thing we need to make sure we do is the last case doesn't need to have a break at the end. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that because the break right now is obsolete, meaning that whenever we hit a break, it's gonna stop the code from running into the next case, but because we don't have any other cases after case number zero, it's just gonna go ahead and stop the code automatically. So we don't need a break, it's, it's completely obsolete. So right now we have a bunch of different cases here. And just like with the if statement, we had something called an else statement, meaning that if one of these were not true, then it would just go ahead and run whatever the last statement was, which was an else statement. Like the one we talked about in this episode, we also have something similar to an else statement that just runs a specific code if none of these statements are true. So after case zero, I'm just gonna go ahead and run down to the next line, and I'm gonna go ahead and create something called default which is basically just going to be the default one is gonna run if none of the cases are true. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say we have day, which is equal to I don't know, question mark, just to make it funny, um, which basically just runs this code down here if the switch doesn't know which day it is. So one thing to bear in mind is that because we removed the break from case zero, because we didn't have anything underneath the case zero, uh, because we just included the default one, of course, right now, we're gonna have to include the break again because it's on the last piece of code, we don't need to have a break in. So I'm gonna save this, and right now, if I were to go inside my browser, refresh, you guys can see it says, it is Wednesday, because right now it's actually checking the current date, which is equal to three, and because case number three says day is equal to Wednesday, it's gonna go ahead and spit out Wednesday inside the browser. Now, of course, right now, you could change this into anything, meaning that I could also go inside my, uh, so I could actually say if variable day is a specific case, then we could also run a specific code. So I can actually go ahead and go into variable day, set it equal to Wednesday, because it's Wednesday today where I am, witness day. And right now, if day is actually equal to Wednesday, we're gonna go ahead and check down here if it is equal to Wednesday, then it's gonna go ahead and run whatever's down here. So it's actually gonna go ahead and say, day is going to be changed to, you know, hey, or something else instead. So right now, if I were to actually go inside the browser, because right now it is Wednesday, because day is equal to Wednesday, um, the switch is going to spit out the first case what actually goes in and says, what is day? Well, case number one says, if it's Wednesday, it need to change day to this. So inside my browser, because we inserted the day down here, it's going to go ahead and say, it is hey. So we can also go ahead and check for strings inside these cases here. It doesn't have to be numbers. It can be true and false statements like a Boolean. It can be all kinds of data we can insert inside the switch. So we could actually say if day is equal to Wednesday, then it's gonna go ahead and say, if this is actually true, then it should spit out, hey, if it's false, then it should spit out, no. So right now, if we were to actually delete all these, you know, things we have down here, we have a bunch of cases, I'm just gonna remove all of them, like so, remove the last break because we don't need it. Right now, if I were to go inside the browser, it is still gonna say, hey, because this is going to be true, but if I were to change the word, into something else. Right now it's actually gonna be false, meaning that it's gonna change it to no. So a switch statement can do a bunch of things. And it's basically just an extension of an if, else if, and else statement. You know, just a much simpler way to do it, depending on how you feel like using it. It's really up to the application you're building, which one is the most optimal to use. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you guys next time.